nobody is irreplaceable. I'm not irreplaceable. You're not irreplaceable. We should stop thinking about what our exes are finding, who our exes are dating, and just focus on the next part. In the 15 for my bro, yeah. 15 with my bro, yeah. Lakers, I wanna come home. Lakers, I wanna come home. Show my love. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Zara Beauty in the yeah, yeah and I am back. <laughs> Bitch, I'm back with another video. Yes. So I'm gonna be making a couple videos tonight. So if you guys see me with the exact same makeup and hair, just pretend like it's brand new, okay? Just be like, who girl, oh my god. <laughs> I miss y'all like every time I go away from camera I come back I feel this rush of energy like this hyperactiveness yeah I'm not really this hyper in real life but just being with y'all just having the atmosphere and just being in front of camera really makes me happy like I really loved doing this for real if this is your first time on my channel how about you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me baby okay <laughs> also make sure you turn on your notifications so that you will know whenever I drop a new video so today is gonna be a Dear Zara episode so these are questions I see on the internet people have sent me questions about their life and about things they're going through I also follow a lot of blogs where they talk about you know relationship love sex you know friendship businesses and stuff like that and I curate some of these questions and I talk to you guys about it and give my opinion so today's question is should I return the ring so today's question says keep me anonymous but I'm in a tight corner at the moment my boyfriend proposed I said yes I love him but he's not ready financially when I asked him where we will live he said we will stay with his parents or still squat with his friends because he's sharing an apartment he is a good guy but he doesn't have money at the moment I want to return the ring and say he should propose again when he has more stability am I wrong because if I'm his fiance he wants us to do court wedding soon I'm moving to his parents place I know he'll break up with me what if I don't find a good guy like him again Whew, child. This is a this is a tough one. Babe. This is just purely my opinion. I think that before you propose to somebody or before you start talking marriage, your finances, and I mean both of you, your finances should be in order. A hundred million percent. And that's for the male and the female or whoever, whatever gender you guys are getting married. I feel like both of you should have a good plan financially. And I always say this, a good five-year plan. We don't know the future. We don't know anything. But a plan sets aside a standard of living for both of you. You know this is how we're going to live. This is how we're going to create and curate our finances and stuff like that. And this is what our budget for the next couple months as a team and I feel like I don't like this idea of a guy just proposing to a girl when he doesn't know if the girl is ready to marry him I don't know if it's just me I don't really like those surprise proposals like what if we're not in the right space like you can't just spring that up on me I feel like at some point we should have talked about marriage before you propose is it is it rocket science am I different am I strange for thinking like this because when I see other people like oh my god I didn't expect you didn't expect it you've been dating him for seven years and you didn't expect at some point to get married you guys never had that conversation you never talked about it I don't get it like when people say that like not to rain on your parade or anything not to spoil your thunder but sus y'all should have had this conversation like y'all should have definitely had this conversation sus because money is huge Davido said it love is sweet though when money and love is sweeter hmm. I have to show you guys a little bit of voice you know so, so, so. <laughs> but honestly I 100% agree with that love is sweet but when there's money it's sweeter when you guys are both financially secure it makes the marriage sweet like sweeter like you want to do things for this person because you know that money is not a problem now imagine this you want to get married like coming back to the post at hand so imagine sis says yes to this man they move into his parents house from the very beginning they wouldn't be able to enjoy their marital bliss by themselves because guess what a third party is already part of their marriage the parents how are you really going to be husband and wife in somebody else's house now if it's a traditional thing that's different if it's a tradition i know some traditions when they marry the parents still live with them like i know like indian tradition sri lankan and some other traditions like the woman moves into the parents house like 
the son moves into the parents. I don't know what it is, but I know it's a much communal living. Like they live together. Like the parents live with the kids. They usually have big houses where everybody can live together. So if it's a traditional thing, that's different because then that's what you're used to. And that's what you already plan for as your tradition. But when it's something that you're not, that's not what you want in your life. It's not a tradition. It's just a circumstance. No, bitch. Wait till your circumstances are better. I would definitely tell sis over here to wait till her circumstances are better. Wait till his circumstances are better. Because I still don't think you should be in a relationship where somebody is piggybacking the other person. Babon they walk, monkey they shop. You don't want that kind of situation. Because if she's the one that ends up being the breadwinner, it'll just make the marriage sour. And you know that... The first year of marriage is usually the hardest one. Many, I think I forget the correct statistics, so don't quote me. I think around 50 something percent of marriages don't pass the first year. And that's very crazy. I'm talking about North America. That's like, that's crazy. So that first year, the first couple years of your marriage is the most important to lay the foundation of what your family life is going to be, what your marriage is going to be. And that's something that a lot of people, especially in our generation, we don't think of. We watch all these Netflix movies and all this shit and we think oh my god we have this understanding of what love is and we are ready to take on whatever it is with our partner then boom financial tribulations comes and slaps you in the face and you're just like oh, oh my god what am i gonna do you need to be ready financially you need to be ready okay both of you need to be in a space where you guys can coexist financially without being codependent on the person or if the other person if it's something you guys plan to say you know what i want to be a housewife or a house husband while this person works and that person does this if it's something you guys have both planned for then that's fine but if it's just again as a result of circumstance i think that you shouldn't do it as for returning the ring this is why it comes down to talk about marriage before you actually marry talk about these things don't just be in a hurry to just take that marriage box and take that wedding box talk about it why is she coming to strangers online when she could have had this conversation with her fiance well her boyfriend because he's proposing to her he's probably thinking let me tie her down now so that she doesn't go anywhere while I try and hustle and da 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 But then the thing about it, and this is what I've said, sometimes hustle changes people. Hustle changes people. You do not know if this person will still love you when he is in a different part of his life, when it's a different point of his life. You might have been the struggle girlfriend, and when he marries, or well, when he makes it or makes money or whatever, he doesn't want, he associates you with that struggle, so he wants to move on to somebody else. There's a lot of things that can happen in this kind of situation. But if they get married, is it then a situation where you're now in a tough spot, where you don't even know how to act, because you've been carrying the entire family for the last couple of years. Now he's making it, and then you guys don't even know how to, you know, how to communicate or how to make it work, or someone is feel, feels like left out. Or, you know, there's just a lot of things that can happen. I will honestly say that I am not personally, I am not going to squat with your parents in our first couple years of marriage. That's not going to happen. I'd rather, if, we're, if we must be married, you can still live in your place and I live in my place. If that is ridiculous, then we do not need to get married. Because I'm not moving my things to stay in your parents, especially if I have my place. So then I'll move out of my place to go and stay in your, what the fuck? Both of them seem like they are not ready for marriage. She's waiting for the guy to be financially ready. And I'm just like, how about you? How are your finances? Are you ready? Is this something where you can take on the mantle of the relationship till he gets his feet together? Or is this something where he's not really trying to get his feet together? Where are you guys in? Where is he in that financial situation? And this is why you should talk. Some people feel like they owe their partner's marriage because of how long they've been living together or how long they've been staying together. And I'm just like, not really. Because you both, again, have to be at the same mindset to be ready and talk about marriage. You don't owe anybody marriage. However, there is some certain kind of like expectations that people have after X amount of time of being together. And they just feel like, you know, we need to get married. We need to take this to the next level. I feel like that's not necessarily as important as making sure you're ready for the next level. You know, if you want to take it to the next level, make sure you're ready financially, you know, emotionally, everything. Because I, I'm still of the opinion that kids are better in a marriage than in a single environment just because there are two people raising the child as opposed to one person just bearing all the work. So are you ready for that? See, this whole, where will I find someone again? Like, you feel like, oh, you cannot find someone. <sighs> 
I know this sounds bad, but nobody is irreplaceable. I'm not irreplaceable. You're not irreplaceable. We should stop thinking about what our exes are finding, who our exes are dating, and just focus on the next path. Where will you find a guy like him again? There's 8 billion people in the world. Girl, if you open your eyes and open your mind, you will find somebody else that's in the right place. Now, I don't think this is a good reason to break up with him, though. I don't think it's a good reason to break up with him because this is something you can easily talk to him about. Yes, he will be very hurt because it's it's rejection in a way. You have to understand that if you decide to go this route, it might not happen. He might not propose to you again. He might break up with you. There's a lot of things that can happen and you need to be prepared for that because that is your decision. You cannot cut corners just to make him happy. You guys need to have a joint decision. So if you talk to him and lay out your points like a normal human being and, and explain to him why not like you're throwing away the proposal but you're just going to save it and not move forward with the marriage, you guys can be engaged but not move forward with the marriage till everyone is ready. Do you know what I mean? That's also a good in-between but... I mean, girl, it is what it is. I feel like marriage is something that should be discussed with your spouse, with the person you want to marry, and not with everybody else. You guys should both be in a good place. And not saying that you guys will say, okay, by this day, you're going to propose to me. No. But you guys should be in a space where you know the other person is thinking of marriage and you guys have both talked about what will happen in marriage or like, you know, talking about future plans and stuff like that because he should know his situation before trying to go into it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, guys, that's what I think about the entire thing. What do you guys think about this? If you are with a partner that proposes to you but is not financially stable, would you move on with the marriage? Would you move on with the engagement? Would you marry him? Would you move in with his parents or squat with his friends? Are you to ride or die that doesn't mind that and can just just make it work till something happens or are you the kind of person that pr prefers a little bit more intentionality and preparation when it comes to stuff like this let me know what you guys think about this stuff in the comment section below let me know what you guys think of also about dear zara and you know talks with zara and these kind of videos i want to do more of them in the future um i just want to know if you guys want to see stuff like this or you want me to focus on other stuff let me know all your ideas and all your thoughts in the comment section below if you are new to my channel please make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you leave me a like if you enjoyed this video share this video with your friends and all of that great stuff till next time babies i will see you in my next video bye, -bye.